I'm Chifi Arosan, joining you all the way from Romania. I'm not sure if you know this country. Uh, it's an average sized one from Eastern Europe. Um, and you have here on the bottom left of the screen a map of uh, Europe uh, with all the countries in the European Union highlighted in green. Uh, Romania being the, let's say, strong green uh, country uh, highlighted there. So in case uh, you don't know Europe very well, uh, well, that's where I'm, I come from. Uh, Romania is a country famous for many things, but um, one of the, the things I like to brag about is the fact that uh, we are famous for our hackers, programmers, and uh, computer enthusiasts in general. Um, and speaking of them, I, I consider myself one of them. Um, technology has been my passion for many years, uh, since I was in high school, basically. Uh, that's like 14 years ago, if my memory is correct. Um, so I, I loved uh, computers uh, from the moment I saw one and got a chance to, to play with one. Um, and at that moment, I really knew what I wanted to do with my life. So um, in my professional career, I uh, played um, quite a few roles. I started as a technical engineer with IBM. Um, then I was a freelance consultant working with a lot of big clients around Europe, from big companies like KLM Airlines, Deutsche Bank, and so on, but you know, doing IT on projects for them. Um, then I decided to go uh, to the other side of the um, you know, barricade, uh, and I decided to become a project manager. So I was a project manager for four and a half years for uh, Procter & Gamble. Uh, doing lots of IT rollouts of enterprise solutions, pretty uh, challenging stuff at the moment. Um, and then I decided again to switch careers, and um, well, um, I made this change last month, actually. Uh, so since then, um, I'm again into consultancy and uh, focusing a lot on tech blogging. Uh, I run a website, well, actually, more than just web, one website, but um, the most important and relevant project for today would be uh, sevontutorials.com. It's a website where, together with a couple of folks from other countries, um, I write about uh, Windows 7, how to best get, uh, how to best get the best computing experience out of that operating system. We also touch uh, topics like networking, the, the one we talk today, uh, security, and uh, we also do book reviews for um, technical books. Um, and as it says here, I also am the author of uh, Network of Computers and Devices, a book which I uh, managed to publish together with O'Reilly and Microsoft Press as of January this year. Um, and uh, basically for me, it's uh, a dream come true. But that's enough about me. Uh, so let's talk a bit about the, the webcast we have today. So I, what I want to do is answer a few simple questions, but with uh, complex answers, I would say. So I want to uh, go for questions like, how many computers does today's um, home have? Uh, what operating systems do the computers in the home network um, use? Uh, what other uh, devices are connected to a home network? Uh, what security solutions people are using to secure the computers in their homes? Um, and last but not least, what does frustrate them when working with home networks? So I hope these are a couple of interesting questions for you as well, not just for me. Um, I wanted to, to get the answers to these questions uh, when I started working on the book, Network of Computers and Devices. Uh, but since I focused on finishing it, I didn't get a chance to actually do something about it until March this year. Um, so, um, uh, in March, uh, I finally found the time to, to work on this, and I emailed a couple of friends from the blogging, um, tech blogging um, area, um, and some of them decided to help me out. So basically, we ran for a whole month a survey uh, on the website you see mentioned there, so you know, lots of names um, uh, on the technical side. Um, we also used a couple of forums. Uh, social networks, uh, and also websites where people uh, were searching for free stuff. We also had prizes, so uh, we wanted to ensure that um, people which are not necessarily technical uh, answer our survey as well. 
So uh, in the end, we had 60, uh, 685 valid answers. All of them I read line by line <laughs> um, to, to gather all the conclusions I'm going to present to you today. Um, and just to you know, clarify a bit more, so um, we had people answering this survey from all over the world. However, the focus, um, most answers came from the U.S., so like half of them. We also had around 7% of answers from people coming from the U.K., another 7% from Canada, and 4% each from Australia, Romania, and India, while the rest of the attendees were from you know, the uh, plenty of other countries, but uh, there were not that many to, to amount to a significant percentage by, by themselves. So that's pretty much all about the study. Um, now I'd like to get to, to uh, know a bit more about you, the, the audience of today's webcast. So uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to put a few questions uh, and uh, get your answers. Uh, so the first one, I'd like to know where you're from and um, uh, if you're from a more exotic country, uh, well, meaning not from U.S. or Canada, which I know for sure is uh, most of the audience of today, uh, don't hesitate to you know, share your country, your location uh, in the group chat window. So um, I'll give a few seconds for all the answers to uh, be given. Okay, hope this is enough. Uh, Yasmin, if you think I should give more, let me know. Um, okay. So, I hope the results are showing for a moment. Okay. I'll show up on screen. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, lots of you are from the U.S. So with quite a bit of uh, a chunk of people coming from Europe, and I see a few from Asia. I'm really curious where exactly from, uh, if you can share that on, uh, on chat. So thanks for uh, the first few answers. Now I have another question. Uh, do you work in IT? You know, anything IT related from a system I mean, job programmer, project manager, uh, tech support, whatever. Okay, and I see somebody is from Malaysia, so welcome. Okay. So let's see. results from the survey. So, okay, uh, we do have quite a large chunk of people not working in IT related fields, so that's very good. Uh, I think you'll also get some really interesting information from today's webcast. So thanks for the answers. Um, one more question. Uh, well, actually, I have more, but this is the first of a couple and other. So do you have a home network where you live right now? Uh, and by home network, I mean uh, two or more computers connected together, sharing an internet connection. as well. So um, as I have hoped, you do have a home network uh, where in the place you live right now. So 91% of people joining in Sebcat should be familiar with most of the um, topic uh, topic discussed in Webcat. And I see here uh, 
question in group chat, how about the Mac or PC? Well, here it doesn't matter. When, when I uh, talked to computers, I was being very generic about it. Okay, and uh, last question. Are you familiar with the study I mentioned in the beginning, and the one we ran on uh, home networks and the websites uh, I mentioned earlier? Okay, so most of you are not familiar, so I'm guessing you're coming from other websites than the ones I mentioned, and that's pretty good. I'm happy to, to see it. Um, so um, the ones who have seen the, the study I'm talking about uh, might know already most of the information. However, I'll be trying to provide some additional stuff that wasn't published, so uh, you know, there should be some value for you staying as well. So thanks for all the answers. Um, that's it for the first batch of interaction. I wanted to do this just to, to give you a feel of how today's webcast is going to work. So, uh, you know, for each section, I'll do a bit of talking initially, explain things, what we've done, what are the results we've shown, but we'll also be asking you questions um, to see, if, you know, uh, what you think and, uh, you know, what kind of home networks you have and problems you have. And uh, I'll try to exchange answers with you all uh, throughout this webcast. Um, I'll be trying to take some quick questions during the session itself. However, I'll uh, do most of the Q&A at the end. And for those who stick to the very end, I also have a surprise. So, you know, give you one more reward to, to, to stay uh, through all this webcast. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Now let's start to, to uh, uh, talk about uh, the, the answers to the questions I mentioned initially. Uh, so, first question I want to answer uh, to get with you is, how many computers are there in a typical home network? So, on average, how many computers you will find in a home network? So, I want to start again with uh, a question to you uh, to see, if, you know, how big are your own home networks? And then we'll quickly see the results um, that I um, had in the study I ran, and we are, we'll be able to compare them and see um, if they match well or not. So here I'm talking just computers, desktop, laptop, netbook, servers. No, nothing else. Okay, and I see a question here in the group chat saying, do I gather statistics for my next book? The answer would be no. <laughs> uh, however, I do want to see um, how uh, people joining this uh, webcast uh, compare uh, with the results I have from the, the, the study to see, you know, how close they are, if the study was fully relevant or um, if, you know, I should make a better one in the future. So uh, the results you can see on screen. So uh, as I was expecting, you tend to have quite a lot of computers in your home. So uh, if you look there, it's like from three or more computers, the huge majority, like more than 80%, uh, with uh, quite a big chunk of people having actually more than five, uh, which is actually in line uh, with um, what you'll see soon. One more question before I uh, go through the results of uh, The study is how many people live in your home, so the same home where you have the, the home network. Okay. 
Okay, let's see the results. So, actually, from two or more people, I think if I would average out, it would be around three, somewhere like that. So, the peak matrix is that. Okay, now let's see the results I, I got from the study. So, uh, should be showing up right now on your screen. So. Uh, the average result I got from the study I ran was that people have four computers in the home network. And here I'm talking strictly computers, not anything else. I'll talk about other devices uh, in the next sections of the, the webcast. So here you can see the split. Uh, so um, if you do a bit of counting, what you'll see very quickly is that um, networks have up like 57% uh, of networks have up to four computers, while the rest have more than four computers. So if you do the math correctly, then you get an average of four. Now, how do these computers split um, between them? So you know, how many desktops, how many laptops, and so on. So uh, if you combine the results from this webcast with a study made by Forrester Research, um, on the um, market share of in PC unit sales in the U.S., uh, you will get the following picture. So in a home network, there are four computers. One of them surely is a desktop. Two of them are laptops. And one of them is a, an even more mobile form of computer, so it's either a netbook or sometimes it can include also you know, a tablet PC. Servers do show up, but let's say if you stick to the average uh, for computers uh, network, most likely they are not there. Now, how do they, these computers distribute per uh, family member? So um, if you combine the results of the study also with uh, the, the data from the U.S. Census Bureau, which says that in average U.S. family there are three people, um, and I'm pretty sure this average you know, is close and representative for most of Western Europe at least. Uh, then it would mean that, uh, let's say, the parents or you know, two of the people from the home would be using the laptop. The desktop most probably is there for the whole family to use, while one um, of the family members uh, are using uh, one mobile uh, computer, something like a netbook as I said before, or a tablet. So uh, that's pretty much it for the first question, how many, first two questions actually, how many computers are there in a home network and how they are distributed. And here if you remember the, the results um, shared from by you in the surveys you've done, it's actually pretty much, you know, pretty close. So you know, we got two surveys stating pretty much the same thing. So, um, next question. What operating systems people use in their home networks and how they are distributed? Um, here I won't be asking you any questions, um, so I'll just go to the statistics. Um, and I think you'll find some surprising numbers here. Uh, personally, I didn't expect some of them. So, um, first of all, I would like to explain how to interpret them. So, what you see here is not like um, you know, Windows 7 being used on 90% of the computers in a home network, it's more like Windows 7 being used on at least one computer in 90% of all home networks. So, you know, that's a very important distinction I like to make. Uh, so you don't uh, interpret the, the numbers in the wrong way. So if you look for these uh, statistics, you can see easily that Windows 7 is very present in today's home network. So it's um, if you are to approximate, it's like in each network there should be one computer with Windows 7. Um, Windows XP, again, has a pretty large share, so uh, uh, it's present in like half percent of the home networks. Um, and one thing that surprised me a bit as well is to see how much Linux uh, is being used. So it's uh, present in 30% of home networks, but I do have there some uh, more info I'll share immediately after the, this slide. Um, another surprising big presence is the fact that people use also servers in their homes. 
So Windows Home Servers, uh, Home Server has uh, a pretty reasonable market share, I would say, um, and Windows Server 2008 uh, as well. In the other category, which only uh, saw people mentioning Chrome OS or BSD-based operating systems, or even Windows 2000. So now let's you know talk a bit about some conclusions um, from this, uh, this this study. So um, you know if you look through the numbers, you will see that Windows 7 and Linux tend to have better adoption in home networks. What I saw from the individual numbers is I looked very closely to, to you know, the re replies I got from the Linux users is that people are more likely to use Linux on at least one computer if they have a larger home network. And Linux showed up uh, quite often uh, when people said that they have four uh, or more computers in their home network. Uh, Windows XP seem to be, seems to be used mostly on older computers. Um, people don't necessarily buy a new computer and install Windows XP on it. They tend to either you know, use Windows 7 that's packaged now with you know, all computers or Mac in case they are Mac users or uh, if they install something, um, let's say, uh, because they really, really want to, most, uh, they will go also for, for Linux. Um, that's pretty much it uh, with the distribution of um, operating systems per home networks. Uh, let me go quickly uh, through the q and A. I think I have a bit more here. So uh, people are asking where I can get more information about this study. Uh, well, if you search for um, Anatomy of home networks on sevenTutorials.com. You will get very detailed uh, results as well. But you know there won't be, let's say, uh, too much info except what you see here. Actually, in this web cartel, there is more info than on the website. Now to move on quickly to the next topic uh, is how do people connect? their home network to the internet. So here, um, I mean, I didn't want to make a split between, you know, how many people use ADSL versus fiber versus satellite or whatever internet connection. I wanted to know, you know, if people use a router to uh, share the internet connection with all the computers and devices in their home. And if they do, then, you know, what kind of router is it? Is it a router that they purchased on purpose, or is it a router, you know, we simply accept it from the internet uh, provider. So uh, just to uh, bring you back uh, in action, um, I do have this question for you. Uh, so please answer it in a couple of seconds. So, you know, what kind of device connects your home to the internet? Is it a router you purchased yourself? Is it a router that was provided by the internet service provider? Is it another type of you know, device that, uh, that you are using to connect all the computers and devices together and share the, the internet connection? Your, somebody is asking here about brand routers, if I tell it correctly. So, you know, if you purchased a router, then, you know, say you did, it doesn't matter the brand, I'm not looking for this kind of information. Okay. So, let's see the results. Okay, and this is actually very similar to what we've seen in our study. So, people that um, have a home network them to purchase their own routers, their own equipment. Um, less of them actually accept the, the one provided by internet provider. And here, let's compare quickly with the results from the, the study. So here, the percentages are very similar. So 65% um, people buying their own routers, 32 using the one provided by internet service provider, and a very small percentage using other types of 
devices to, to share the internet connection. So I, I think this is a very encouraging result and I'm very happy to see this. And why do I say this? Well, simply because uh, purchasing your own router it means a couple of things. First of all, that you've done your homework, you know what you're about to do, um, and you've done a conscious choice, which means you will get better results out of your home network, you'll get better connections, you know, more the features you actually need. While if you go the route of, you know, using the um, router and the equipment provided by internet service provider, at least, you know, being euro, from my experience, it means that you will get an older or cheaper device which doesn't work that well uh, with uh, all the operating systems and devices of today. Uh, and this is one source of, of problems for, for many people. Uh, for example, one of the, the most controversial things I noticed in the uh, several tutorials is that people complain that uh, routers from their internet uh, service providers don't work well with their new laptops with Windows 7 and you know, the firmware of that router is outdated, doesn't support the latest devices and so on. So being um, cautious and uh, buying your own router, it will mean that you actually have less problems and uh, better home network overall. Now, talking about uh, devices, you already mentioned, you know, tablets and uh, TiVo and, you know, other kinds of things. Um, so there was a section in the study of what other things are connected to the home network. And I put here on screen, you know, just a couple of uh, quick, uh, you know, easily identified uh, devices. Um, so let's see what other devices people connect on the home networks. And one moment here to push the results. So um, oh, as you can easily see, printers seem to be pretty much everywhere. So they are very common nowadays, not like 10 years ago when you had a printer and uh, <laughs> it was quite something. Uh, scanners are surprisingly popular too. Um, so they seem to be around I mean, half of home networks. Um, external hard disks are again very popular. Uh, phones are often connected as well with the rest of the home network. Uh, consoles seem to be, uh, again, very popular. And digital video and photo cameras as well. Um, other devices, well, here people were able to input, you know, many things from musical instruments to uh, all kinds of, you know, more exotic devices. Um, just to share a few conclusions here. Um, and I, I, these come also from the uh, comments, you know, the text-free comments we received uh, from, from people who answered the survey. So uh, scanners, as I said, they are uh, surprisingly common. One thing that helps is that people tend to purchase nowadays all-in-one devices. So uh, printers, which also have a scanner included, and, you know, they are also wireless, uh, are pretty good sellers nowadays, um, and they help um, uh, in adoption of, you know, scanning capabilities in the home network. Smartphones, uh, what I'm surprised to see here is that uh, they are very popular. They seem to be more popular than digital cameras when, come, when uh, it comes to connecting them with the home network. Um, and uh, the results we saw in this study, they seem to match also some conclusions from a study made by iSupply last year, which were clearly proving that uh, Smartphones are cannibalizing the sales of digital cameras. So people are not using, not buying digital cameras that much anymore. The phone is good for you know, that kind of tasks, and it also includes other features. So people tend to buy more smartphones than uh, they, um, they used to buy digital cameras. Um, and last but not least, it seems that uh, Home network owners uh, are very likely to play games, so you know gaming can be a big part of the home network. Uh, therefore, consoles will be present uh, in almost half of the home networks. Now, let me go quickly uh, okay, through the questions. So it seems I have a couple of things I want, so I'll leave those for later. Now, in the interest of time, um, Let's move to the next section, uh, which was very, very interesting for me, at least. 
So how do people secure their home networks? What kind of solutions do they use on their computers? Um, and let's see quickly the results one moment. Um, again, when you look at these results, I would like to um, make the same mention like with the operating system. So when you read 52% are antivirus only, it means that in 52% of home computers, there is at least one computer with just an, an antivirus installed. It doesn't mean it's like on 52% of all computers, uh, because if you, you know, interpret like that and you add up the numbers, they give more than 100%. So um, now, leaving this, uh, this aside, um, as you can see, it seems that individual solutions are pretty popular. So antivirus only seems very common, firewall only a bit less anti-spire and anti-malware only, even less. However, very popular is installing free independent solutions on a computer, and most likely this means people try to um, save some money and install most probably either free, either free, free uh, security solutions like, for example, um, you know, Microsoft Security Essentials with Windows Firewall or, and maybe uh, Spire, Secure, and Destroy. Um, not that many people uh, pay money for you know, full internet security issues, so only 18% of home networks uh, have a, a commercial solution installed on at least one of their computers. And the new um, kind of solutions popping up in recent years, like total security issues, uh, or, you know, here things Norton 360, which offers not just security suite, but also backup and you know, synchronization and other features. So this is a new kind of product introduced lately, um, and it seems it has uh, pretty slow adoption, so it's uh, only 5.99% of home networks having uh, computers uh, with, with this kind of uh, solution. Um, and the good, very good thing here is that uh, very few people have no security solution installed. So, you know, only 3% of respondees said that uh, they don't use security solutions at all. Now, um, one, uh, one thing I noticed when uh, reading the individual results uh, is the fact that uh, where generally when no protection was mentioned, uh, people use mostly Linux, which you know, has the image of a very secure uh, operating system, and uh, since it's, uh, it doesn't have a big market share, it's not really a target for uh, uh, many producers of malware. Um, and also, Mac users were more likely to, to, to not have security installed, um, a trend which, for me, is a bit worrying, due to the fact that uh, Mac uh, is gaining popularity nowadays, which means more and more malware and viruses will show up. So being a, uh, owning a Mac doesn't mean you should not install a security solution because you are safe. It means you should consider this as well just because um, malware creators will target uh, Mac more and more. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, you know, the obvious conclusion you see from the results here is that uh, home network owners seem to be more uh, security cautious here. Uh, so they do tend to, to have security solutions in thousands of computers, even though it's, you know, just an antivirus. It's not like they don't have a computer completely unprotected, and that's a very good thing. Okay. Um, Looking quickly again from some of the questions. Um, you know, one quick one which I can reply very easily is, does uh, my book have practical suggesting, uh, suggestions on setting up a home network? The answer is yes. Um, the book focuses mostly on Windows 7 computers. However, unlike others in this niche, we'll show you how to make computers with different operating systems work well together. So there are sections for how to make Windows 7 work with Windows Vista, Windows 6P, Mac OS 10, and Linux. So nothing, you know, no major operating system uh, is forgotten. 
Um, okay, now that's it with the questions for now. I'll take more later. So uh, the last topic, the last question, let's say, is uh, what does make um, Home network owners do. What does frustrate them most? Uh, so here, we, when we made the study, we looked at uh, the interaction we had with our readers and seven tutorials. We tried to split the kind of annoyances they noticed in a you know few big areas, and I'll show them right now. So, you know, what we notice is that people are uh, frustrated by Network and hardware, network hardware equipment, um, wireless connections, incompatibility between operating systems, especially ones which are, you know, don't have the same main, uh, developer, um, understanding network features available in different operating systems. Uh, you know, these are confusing uh, sometimes. Uh, security solutions blocking networking features, and that's actually very common. Uh, and I actually faced it myself a couple of times. Uh, sharing devices over the network can be, again, a source of, of frustration. Connecting your phone with your computers, connecting your gaming console with uh, computers, and you know, last but not least, not having any issues. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, the results may be as you expect. At least for me, there were no big surprises here. Uh, one of the big sources of traffic for us is actually problems with wireless connections. And this seems to be like uh, the biggest problem people have. And here the, the um, main culprit uh, is generally uh, routers being old with outdated firmware or you know, not supporting the latest devices and technologies, including in operating systems and so on. Um, another big source of issues. Um, was uh, so, uh, sharing devices over the network, uh, you know, things like I want to share my external hard drive with all the network or my printer to be wireless printer to be visible to all computers in the network. This uh, um, you know, can be a pain uh, quite often. Um, so security solutions were surprisingly high as a frustration source. Um, even in uh, famous solutions like you know, Norton 2011, for example, um, uh, it can block things like your home group and make it not work well unless you define all the computers and devices correctly in um, that software so that you know, it knows how to work with each device and not block uh, the home group feature. So, um, you know, pretty diverse list and here, you know, people uh, confronting uh, many of the, the, the problems I mentioned here. Now, um, I'm, re I'm really curious, I mean, do, those, do these uh, results seem familiar to you? I mean, do you have uh, other issues that maybe are not on the list or uh, you encounter uh, what you see here as well? Just you know, feel free to type a bit on the, the chat window. It's a question here on uh, group chat saying, is any single sign-on solution for diverse networks? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. Yeah, I think it's the name. So if you can provide more info, I'll try to answer that later. Okay. Since, uh, there are no more questions here. Um, I'd like to, to, to share also what people wrote. So there was a section where they were able to, uh, to write freely, uh, share the, the problems that they, uh, that frustrated them most. And um, here people mention very often the internet service providers are being frustrating for them. And people complain, first of all, about uh, saying that they tend to have poor customer service. Um, especially people in the U.S. complain about low bandwidth. And here I, uh, I feel very lucky that I'm in Europe, uh, and especially in Romania, we tend to have very good connections here. Uh, but it seems that's not valid, especially in the U.S. Um, and also people complained about 
uh, full quality of networking devices offered by the internet service providers. And here, I think this is a problem across you know, the whole world. Uh, if I think about the internet providers I work with um, in countries in Europe where I live and work, they they will have the same approach by uh, by cheap devices, use those as much as possible, and uh, not to care too much about the, the quality of service as well. Okay, that's actually it with um, all the questions that uh, got included in the survey uh, and the study we made. Uh, just to summarize here the main conclusions we had, so you know, for you to remember and take home. Um, so if you're thinking about an average home network, it means there will be most probably three people living and sharing four computers, uh, one desktop, two laptops, and netbook or tablet or you know, something very mobile. Uh, Windows Server seems to be almost everywhere when it comes to home networks, so at least uh, one computer um, in a home network will have it installed. Um, families with uh, home networks can have a very digital lifestyle, so this means they first will purchase a new router, uh, they will um, are likely to uh, have consoles, uh, including the home network, uh, use uh, you know, multiple devices like printers, scanners, um, and other, other um, things. Another conclusion from the, the study, uh, home networks tend to be secured, so uh, people will install uh, security on their computers, however, they are most likely to use free security software uh, more than uh, commercial software. Uh, when it comes to, to problems, the top uh, two, let's say, would be wireless connections and problems with uh, service provided by uh, service or devices provided by the internet service provider, um, and you know if you put everything together and all the data that um, we got from this study, I think that uh, home networks have evolved quite a bit today. So they are not you know just one or two computers and maybe use a printer as it was uh, 10 years ago. Uh, now they have a multitude of devices connected, uh, very diverse problems to, to confront. Um, and they definitely resemble in complexity and sometimes size um, networks found in uh, small businesses. So, um, before we go to the Q&A section, uh, I'd like to, to give a few details about the surprise we have. So, um, Yes, Min will uh, help me extract a random winner um, from the attendees of today's session who will win a copy of uh, Network of Computers and Devices. Uh, so while, yes, Min? Hi, Cyprian. On the line. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hi there. We have selected Alex Chen. Alex, if you're still with us, you are the winner today of Cyprian's book. You receive a free copy of Cyprian's book, and we will get that out to you here shortly. Back to you, Cyprian. Thank you very much for the help, and congrats to the winner. I hope you'll uh, enjoy the book. Um, and, and speaking of it, as I said earlier, uh, this book is aimed at helping you make your home networks work, work well. So it's focused mostly on Windows 7 since it's you know, the latest and greatest operating, from, uh, operating system from Microsoft, but it does uh, cover interoperability between uh, different operating systems. It also covers uh, uh, things like you know, how to connect and share other devices, things like printers, or how to you know, connect your smartphone with your computer and share files and data and things. So it should be a pretty useful book um, if you're interested in this topic. Um, and, um, you know, if you like this webcast, I definitely encourage you to join also Seven Tutorials. Uh, uh, take a look at the website. As I said, uh, we co definitely cover networking there um, together with uh, Windows-related topics. Uh, now, enough about you know commercial stuff. Let's say uh, let's go to the the questions. Uh, so let's see. Um, 
what we have here and uh, what I'm able to easily answer in a couple of minutes. Uh, if not, I'll ask people to, to send them via email. So, are there any indications that smartphones suffer from the same level of security breaches as computers? Uh, well, here we didn't include this in the study, but if you look through the news, you definitely see um, more often mentions about you know viruses and all kinds of malware being developed for smartphones. Uh, what I noticed personally is the fact that Android seems to be more targeted uh, versus uh, uh, iPhone, however, you know, there is malware for both. And if you look, for example, through the Android market, you'll see lots and lots of uh, security solutions showing up. So you have Norton, Kaspersky, Bitdefender, WebRoot. Everybody develops today a security solution for smartphones. So I'm guessing this is not because, you know, they simply want to sell uh, more software. It also has a reaction to the fact that uh, security uh, threats are becoming more and more popular um, on smartphones. Is there another question? Is there a home network that has smartphones and tablets as the primary devices connected? Well, since, you know, if you look through the, the questions we put, uh, it isn't obvious that that's, the, that's valid. And uh, from the free text comments we got, it doesn't seem that you know people have this kind of combination uh, on their uh, home networks. But you know, if the the person who Agatha, if I think, uh, if I got the name correctly, uh, if you do have this kind of setup, I definitely want to know more. Uh, it would be a bit unusual, uh, and I want to to learn how it works for you. Okay. Uh, let's see other questions. How do you blend two wireless routers onto one network so that they both share the same IP network space? Well, yeah, this is a question which is very technical and I won't be able to answer in you know very, very briefly. It's actually subject for a tutorial I uh, we need to publish in seven tutorials. Uh, so if you want to have more dialogue on this one, do email me. Uh, so my email address, I didn't share it, so it's simply my name, Chifian Rusen, um, at gmail.com. And if you go to seven tutorials, you, you know, quickly find uh, how to, uh, to get in touch with me. Uh, next one. What are the most common errors home users make when configuring their Home networks. Well, this is a very good question. Um, what I noticed from several tutorials um, is the fact that people tend to upgrade or change their network equipment, equipment very rarely. So they don't necessarily buy a router every two or three years. They, you know, will use a five-year-old router as well. Um, and uh, they don't take into consideration the fact that uh, technologies have changed, computers have changed, operating systems have changed. So the more older your home, uh, your networking equipment is, the higher chances are for you to encounter issues. So this is what I would say the, the most common error. Um, another one which is a bit stupid, <laughs> actually, if you think about it, uh, uh, is the fact that when they work with laptops and wireless connections, they don't seem to pay too much attention on about uh, if the laptop has the wireless network card turned on or not. And they keep forgetting to, you know, press that button that turns the wireless network on or they forget to activate it in their BIOS whenever, you know, that's necessary. Um, and uh, then they they ask, uh, you know, why does my wireless doesn't work? Now let's see the next one. I share a home wireless network with two other people, but I don't want them to have access to my files or printer. How can I set up my own some network so my two laptops and the phone can share resources while the other two people are kept out? 
So this is a question from Annie Smith. Annie, if you're still uh, on group chat, uh, can you, you know, tell me if you're using what kind of operating systems you are using? And uh, I'm not sure if you know, Annie is still here, but I'll try to answer that question. It might be interesting for to to, to more than uh, than just Annie. So here it depends on the operating systems. Okay, so she's Annie says. Uh, She's using Windows 7. If you're using Windows 7, that's easy. So uh, just create your own home group. Use a password that you do not share with the other two people and share everything just with the home group. If you're doing that, then they will not be able to share. If you're using also other operating systems, then you know things can get a bit more complicated. First of all, you need to use a different home group than them. So you know, see, generally the home group is uh, the sorry the work group is uh, called work group. So change the name to something else. This means um, your computers are less likely to be seen by others. And when you share uh, folders and files and printers, define very granular permission that you want to share these only with um, you know users defined uh, on your computers or, uh, whose username and password uh, are known just to you. Uh, but you know, for the whole thing, so this is here. If you, you want more, just email me or simply look through the website. Actually, and there are, we have a tutorial there for uh, showing most of these things. Uh, let's see. Next question. Okay, I think the, this is the last one from Paul Skinner. Uh, how hard is it to make an old wireless router into a wireless access point connected by Ethernet wire to the new wireless router? Well, okay, I think here the answer depends on the actual module you use, but it should be uh, a big thing from, you know, I work mostly with uh, Belkin and Dealing uh, routers uh, so far. Um, and it shouldn't be really hard actually. So they definitely had um, the options uh, in their um, administration software required for you to make this. So I, I definitely don't think this would be a problem. Just you know, look carefully for all the options. Say the other one uh, to get you know uh, an IP from the the main wireless router. Should be okay. Let's see. Any other questions? Oh, I, well, I guess I, I don't think I missed anything else. Uh, Yasmin? I'm not seeing any uh, new questions that came in, Ciprian, so I think you answered all of them. Okay, then, uh, well, I guess that's it. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for attending this webcast, and you know it's a first for me. So I would definitely like to know, and you know, if you can still stay for a few seconds, if you enjoyed it or not. Uh, so do leave some comments about, you know, was it good, was it not? Uh, should I improve anything for uh, a future webcast? Uh, I think I would enjoy. Uh,